This is Channel 2 News with Tricia Toyota, John Schubeck, Weather with Kevin O'Connell, and Jim Hill on Sports. From Los Angeles, this is Channel 2 News tonight. Good evening, everyone. Our top story tonight, a tragic boat accident, but a miraculous survival. Tonight, a nine-year-old girl appears to be the only survivor of a mysterious shipwreck off the Palos Verdes Peninsula. She was found alive after floating all night in the waters of the Pacific. Paula Zahn has the latest details. This is all the Coast Guard could see when it was tipped off there was a boat in distress about halfway between the west end of Catalina and San Pedro. Only about three feet of the bow of the 28-foot powerboat was exposed. It was this commercial charter fishing boat, the first string, that discovered the powerboat as it was finishing up a day of fishing off the coast of Catalina. And it was the fishermen and operators on board who made the gruesome discovery. We talked with them as they came into San Pedro tonight with the only known survivor. Paul, the, the captain here, he, uh, he spotted a point of a, a boat, the bow, and we pulled up and then there's one person tangled in a line close to the boat, apparently dead. And we spotted another person, well, approximately a quarter mile there from the, from the boat, and we pulled up and it was a young girl, Desiree, who jumped in the water, and I pulled up and jumped in the water and we got her on the boat. Rescuers say it's a miracle. The nine-year-old Desiree Rodriguez is alive tonight. They think she may have spent almost 20 hours in 62-degree water. When she was pulled from the water, she was conscious and alert, and she had plenty to say to the men who saved her life. She mentioned that they, uh, she had been floating in the water for quite a while, that uh, when they rolled over or went into the water, that it was nighttime and foggy and that uh, she didn't remember how she got away from the boat. Desiree also told rescuers that her mother, father, sister, aunt, and uncle were on board the boat, and that she desperately tried to save the life of her five-year-old sister. She said to me that, uh, uh, I know my sister's dead. I says, well, you don't know that. And she says, yes, I do, because I tried to give her mouth to mouth, and I didn't do it right. Tonight, Coast Guard officials brought the bodies of two of the victims back to Reservation Point tonight. And the man who led the search team talked about what he thinks may have happened to the Rodriguez family. There's no evidence to indicate that there are any other vessels involved. And at this point, the only thing that I could make is speculation. And that's a possibility that if it was rough last night and they had a following sea, that the vessel might have broached and turned over. And still missing tonight, three people, Desiree's father, uncle, and five-year-old sister. Coast Guard officials here at Terminal Island tell us their surface search will continue all night long by one cutter and two patrol boats. And at sunrise tomorrow, aircraft will join in on the search. As for the latest, a nine-year-old Desiree Rodriguez, she is in good condition at San Pedro Peninsula Hospital. And everyone agrees it's a miracle she's alive tonight. This is Paula Zahn reporting live from Terminal Island. All right, Paula, thank you very much. <clears throat> the people living near the Van Nuys Airport fear danger in the skies following a series of fatal plane crashes over the weekend. Two planes crashed separately in Van Nuys on Saturday. They killed, that is, the crashes, a total of seven people, including former soap opera star John Gibson. Together, 11 people died in the Southland Aviation accidents on Saturday, and the people in Van Nuys are very concerned about it. Well, our worst fear is uh, what happened last Saturday could happen in a residential area. A plane could get out of control, crash, and land in a residential neighborhood. And that's what we all fear here. Today, FAA investigators listened to radio conversations between pilots and the Van Nuys Control Tower. And so far tonight, at least, they don't know what caused any of those crashes. In Virginia tonight, new information about the Norfolk and Southern locomotive that derailed along with several cars of the train yesterday an accident that happened during a company outing and it's been revealed tonight that the chairman of the railroad was at the controls at the time the derailment injured 128 people a thousand workers and their families were on board the company says chairman robert clator is a fully qualified locomotive engineer who enjoys operating trains he was not hurt but seven others remain hospitalized tonight cause of the crash is not known in Washington, D.C., John, tonight, a big uh, setback for affirmative action. The U.S. Supreme Court striking down a program that protected the jobs of black teachers 
by laying off white teachers with more seniority. The teachers union in Jackson, Michigan approved the plan in an effort to boost the number of minority teachers. But eight white teachers who were laid off during a budget crunch went to court, charging that they were victims of reverse discrimination, and today the nation's highest court agreed with them. However, not so here in Los Angeles. A man who accused Mayor Bradley of reverse discrimination lost his case today. Stephen McNichols claims that he was fired from Bradley's Office of Urban Development because he is white. He also charged other city officials with reverse discrimination. But a federal jury ruled that McNichols' firing had nothing to do with racial discrimination. John. Trish, there's more legal action in the news tonight. It involves Hugh Hefner, the founder of Playboy magazine. He's claiming he is a victim of sexual McCarthyism. Hugh Hefner has filed a suit against the U.S. Attorney General and the U.S. Pornography Commission. Hefner accuses Edwin Meese and the commission of blacklisting his magazine. He says the Southland Corporation, parent company of the 7-Eleven stores, dropped his magazine because of a letter from the Pornography Commission. He told us that the alleged government intervention is unconstitutional. What's been going on here for the last year is that the Meese Commission on Pornography has been doing a, a witch hunt across the country in the name of research, and it really hasn't been research at all. It's really just been a... Uh, uh, a witch hunt. The Pornography Commission recently released its final report concluding that most pornography is potentially harmful and can lead to violence. Trish? Well, John, an actor who is no stranger to violence, at least up there on the screen, is getting back into the movie biz. Clint Eastwood has been concentrating on his new role as mayor of Carmel, of course, but he's also been spotted scouting locations for a new film called Heartbreak Ridge. The film will apparently be shot in San Clemente. It's about 400 miles south of Carmel. Eastwood is going to be playing a Marine gunner sergeant in the film, presumably between council meetings. Busy man. Wealthy as well. <laughs> Kevin's got a whole treasure of great weather information for us tonight. Apparently it's going to get cooler. He'll be along in a minute, though. Plus, tonight we have the story of a woman who will not give up in getting what she wants. That much more after this. My money's in a new tiered savings account at California Federal. Tiered savings pays higher interest rates for higher balances. Bigger balance, bigger rate. And at CalFed, it's compounded daily. I think I've managed my money well. Why are you telling me all this? Because I want to marry you, Kate. That is, if your parents approve. <laughs> Last year, the best factory racing teams in the world competed for the World Rally Championship. Peugeot won. This commitment to performance has helped Peugeot produce the 505 Turbo, a car road and track has described as leaving many cars of more sporting reputations far behind. So why buy a performance sedan that just promises performance when you could buy one from a company that delivers it? Peugeot. Boy Scout Manual doesn't say anything about being persistent, but a feisty grandmother in Milford, Connecticut, is vowing to become the country's first woman scoutmaster. For 10 years, Catherine Pollard has been fighting to become a scoutmaster. She has been helping out for years, but scouting officials say their leaders must not only be trustworthy, thrifty, and reverent, but be a male. They say that's what a young boy needs. Today, a court agreed. I've had calls from Switzerland, from uh, Sydney, Australia, from England, um, from many parts, Canada particularly. They're all having the same problems we have, where if there isn't a man to do the job, then the boys are just out. That's it. And Catherine is vowing to appeal this court ruling. After all, she says, most boys were made men by their mothers. <laughs> Would you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, I've been giving thought to that. I'm not, I know that that's true in many respects. Now, many strong men had very strong mothers. Sure. But many solid, substantial men also had very substantial fathers as well. I mean, it's a I tough situation to find. I thought it took two. <laughs> so I don't know. In many respects, I think you're right. It's, 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 it's a tough question. I've been thinking about it and may think about this evening. I would have to agree. Okay, what, what do you got for us? Leave my mother out of this. She has nothing to do. Well, as the Scott, as the Scott uh, motto goes, we're going to have to be prepared here in the Southland for a cooler day coming our way tomorrow, but we're still going to have to deal with some air quality problems. With the cooler temperatures, though, some real good news. We had some scattered fires around the Southland today, but the humidity levels will go up, and of course, around fire season, the higher the humidity, the better we like it, simply because it puts a lot of moisture around those plants and possible uh, tinder areas very early in the morning. Outside we go, we'll check out what turned to... 
out to be an absolutely midsummer May day today. High reading 86 at the Civic Center. Believe me, it was warmer in the valley. 63 now. Barometer falling, 72% humidity. Southeast winds 9 miles an hour. One thing's going to happen tomorrow. This frontal system right here is going to start moving through. It'll take a day to move through, but its effects will be felt for at least 48 hours. What's going to happen? It will return the onshore flow. We'll have some scattered showers in the central part of the state. Another little weak disturbance behind it. But what it will also do is increase the cloud cover in the morning and evening hours. And especially along the coast, we're going to have some rather thick fog that may take a little while to burn off in the morning. Flying in the ointment, air quality problems. Had it in the San Gabriel Valley today and in Metro Los Angeles as well. Tomorrow, the San Bernardino Valley will have a possible first stage smog alert. As far as the rest of the areas are concerned, valleys of San Fernando, San Gabriel, Gabriel and Orange County be looking for moderate levels of air pollution tomorrow for those areas. We're going to see again the cooling trend because of the clouds, low 80s in the valleys near 70 at the beach. Deserts though, unbelievably warm. Palm Springs 104, high desert 89 and 73 degrees in the mountains. They need an awful lot of rain in the east and thank goodness they're getting it. From the northern parts of New England all the way down to Georgia, they call it the 10 million dollar rain in the southeast because the soybean crop needs it desperately. However, it's going to move by real quickly. High pressure starting to move in, cooler air for the upper parts of the plain, so obviously the other end of the thermometer, even though this front will bring some moisture to the northern part of California, it'll be dry by the time it moves to our area again, giving us some scattered clouds for tomorrow morning and late tomorrow night. Forecast for one and all this evening, fair in 61, fog at the coast, next five days look this way, partly cloudy for the better part of the mornings, and then it'll go to hazy afternoon sunshine, seasonal temperatures with our daytime best, low to mid 70s over the next couple of days. That's the way it looks from the weather desk tonight, and by the way, thank you very much to the LAPD for putting on a very nice golf tournament for their Orphans and Widows Foundation last Saturday at Rancho. The people were terrific, and I hope we uh, are there for their sweet 17th. That'll you be played the Adam Walsh thing today. The uh, for the Adam Walsh Foundation for missing children and uh, out at Brea, and I was very happy out there as well. It turned out to be a lovely day. Good, good. good times. A long day. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Trish and I are still trying to think out this one. <laughs> right. Who it is? Exactly. Ask most people how long they'd like to live. Many would say 100 years. But a study in England suggests that hitting the century mark may not always be a blessing. A London University sociologist, at least, asked a hundred centenarians if they were glad that they lived so long. Hmm. To wit, 74 said yes, 8 didn't know, and 18 said no. I'm worried about the 8. Those responding were volunteers, so the results are really not scientific. One interesting statistic, however, perhaps out of the 81 women, at least, who participated, 27 never married. Researchers suggest that single women are more likely to make it to 100 than married women. Hmm. Here we go back to the month <laughs> again. Most uh, frequently given reasons for hitting 100, a stress-free life, hard work, and a good diet. Mm -hmm. Got to go along with that. Good axioms. Okay, as long as it takes, right? Mm -hmm. Coming up for us, an inside look at the cocaine epidemic here in the Southland, including some exclusive undercover pictures of deals going down right out in public. We'll have a special report. When you're shaping up your body, the shape that you want, come on in this eggs, cause oh, anything goes. At break of day, beside the bay, on holidays and smoky days, anything goes. It brings in without reservation, just cook up in day creation, and a heaven knows, anything goes. Anything goes with California Fresh Eggs. Minolta Freedom 3. Freedom. New and worry free. Freedom. Auto focusing. Freedom. Auto everything. Freedom. Click is all you do. Freedom. Freedom 3 comes through. Freedom. Freedom's what you've got. Freedom to take your best shot. The Minolta Freedom line of 35 millimeter cameras. Only from the mind of Minolta. Here's the lowest annual percentage rate financing ever in the history of GMAC. Low GMAC 5.9% financing on new GMC S15 pickup trucks. Tough construction, a 2.5 liter engine, and 5.9%. Plus, you could win trips, boats, GMC trucks, and more in the GMC truck Great Escape sweepstakes. And check out the GMC S15 pickup trucks with 5.9%. Length of finance contract is limited. See your GMC truck dealer now. This is how most burglars get their kicks. Foot by foot. Deadbolt or not. 
but not with Schlage, the only deadbolt lock with a strike plate reinforcer and three-inch screws that dig deeper into your wall. Now, how can you knock a lock that offers better protection? Nice try, Schlage. A striking improvement in home security. No drug seems to be spreading faster on the streets of Los mm -hmm. Angeles than rock cocaine. Some say it has become an epidemic because what was once the rich person's drug is now within reach of the middle class and perhaps even the poor. Tonight, investigative reporter Jim Forbes has the first part of his special report on the cocaine epidemic. Here when I've shot coke, I've used all sorts of other drugs. Nothing has had an effect that this has had on me. Um, he was a hardcore drug user for 10 years, and he's talking about cocaine, rock cocaine. These small nuggets, each packing a chemical high so powerful, users say that when smoked, it's a drug unlike any other. It's like having an orgasm is, is what it's like. It's, it's, it's such a good feeling. It's such a euphoric feeling. A high so compelling that young women have been known to prostitute themselves for just $3 just to get money to buy a rock. Some of them don't even turn it for that. They just turn it for the rock. And a 15-minute high. A high so deluding that it eats away at the mind. I stole from my father. More or less, he's laying on his deathbed, and I was dipping into his savings and stealing thousands at a time. A high so demanding that it sold on streets throughout South Central Los Angeles, where it's eroding the fabric of a proud and building community. There is no way to build up any community with this kind of a disease in that community. This is worse than AIDS, it's worse than herpes, it's worse than all other kinds of diseases. Because it's simply tearing, it's eating away, it's a cancer of the mind. See, these people are copying right now. These people are copping dope. This cancer is being peddled in the open, where it's not at all difficult to find. And should you be naive, innocent, or untried, pushers will find you. There's another one standing over there. Look at him patting his hand. Think he got something. But that's them. All up and down this area. Listen carefully for a moment. You'll hear a high-pitched whistle. That was a warning. A signal to peddlers that our car was suspicious. If they hadn't seen that camera, that other street, those guys would have sold you rocks right there. So we placed our camera where it wasn't seen, and for 21 continuous hours, we witnessed scores of deals, day and night. I call them stop and cop rock houses. You can pull your car up, somebody runs out to the car, sells you rocks. Kids, often gang kids, jiggling their wares, counting their profits over and over again. Most of that money will go into the house where the adults stay hidden, raking in the biggest profit while remaining insulated from arrest and a long prison term. Jesse Jackson made a very good analogy where there is no hope they turn to dope. Chilton Alphonse grew up in South Central LA. He's on the mayor's gang task force and tries to mediate disputes between warring factions. Alphonse is also soliciting government and corporate money, hoping to fund alternatives to dope peddling. He says the streets today are much worse than in his day. They need guidance and they need help. And it's time to stop talking about it, as has been done in uh, the halls of our elected officials, and put the money where the mouth is. Well, some in the community, such as Alphonse, aren't waiting for that money. They've already begun to fight back. Within the past two weeks alone, preachers have taken to the streets of South Central L.A., challenging the community to break its silence. Tomorrow we'll tell you about that and other efforts to combat this growing epidemic. But still the reality remains. Rock Coke is in great demand, and the profits in dealing it are enormous. Yeah. And because you call it an epidemic, we should also understand that scenes like you shot are going on all over. Absolutely. It, it, it's all happening the throughout place. the Southland. It is perhaps not as concentrated as in South Central L.A., perhaps not as open as mm -hmm. in South Central, but it is happening in every community that can see us right now. Okay, Jim, thanks. We're going to lighten up just ahead. The Angels try to take the Orioles by storm. In a way, they did. Jim Hill's got the whole story after this. We've just made it easier to get into one of the world's most sophisticated car lines because now you can experience all the advanced styling, all the technical innovation, all the classic luxury that an Audi offers at some very remarkable lease rates. 
So why spend the next five years saving up for a high-performance sedan when you could be driving one? See your Southern California Audi dealer today. His Audi 5000 lease program starts at $298 and ends on May 31st. G'day. You know, trout fishing here in the U.S. is a real art form. The finesse of fly tying, the skill of laying out a perfect cast, and the chance for a fosters or two at the end of the day. It's a golden throat charm. I think I'll try the wombat haired water bait. Aussie bait, an American tackle. <laughs> Good combination, eh? Fosters, Australian for beer, mate. Heads! From Andy Hardy to The Breakfast Club, from the first kiss to the last dance, all the memories, music, and mania with John Ritter, Teenage America, The Glory Years. Then, Tom Cruise had one shot at finding his dream. I got the great talent. I'll get my scholarship. Until he blew his only ticket out of town. It's through your ass to you. Now the odds are against him, but he's not giving up. We're getting out of here, buddy. Because with her love, Tom Cruise is out to make all the right moves. Friday. For KJOY Radio, singer, composer, Paul Anka. You know, Southern California is a very active place, and sometimes you have to slow down and just relax. I know I do. That's why I listen to KJOY FM 99. It really works. So whether at home, at work, or in the car, listen to KJOY FM 99 for the times of your life. Well, let's find out tonight if the water spoiled everything. Certainly did, and the Angels are a little frustrated, I believe. You see, because for the second straight game, the California Angels made news, not so much by what they did, but what they didn't do as rain washed out the beginning of a three-game series with the Baltimore Orioles. And also for the second game in a row, California had a lead and a home run go right down the drain. Rupert Jones' towering home run in the top of the first inning of Orioles starter Ken Dixon turns out to be worth nothing at all. That's because the rain began to fall in the bottom of the second inning. They tried several times to get the game started, but Mother Nature just wouldn't agree. Tonight's rain out will be made up on Thursday afternoon. Elsewhere around the American League, the Cleveland Indians snap a five-game losing streak as Mel Hall goes four for four for the Tribe. Boston scores twice in the ninth inning to down Minnesota. George Brett and Willie Wilson with two RBIs each to help the Royals get by the Texas Rangers. And the Rangers' Don Slott, who was hit in the face with a pitch from Boston's Dennis Boyd on Saturday, will undergo surgery later this week to repair facial fractures. That, despite the injury, team officials say that Slott may be ready to begin batting practice in just a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, there were no games scheduled today in the National League. The Dodgers open a three-game series with the Montreal Expos tomorrow night in Dodger Stadium. Well, apparently good just isn't good enough for the Chicago Bulls. Stan Allback, who coached the Bulls to the playoffs in his first year there, was fired today. Allback becomes the ninth coach in 10 years to be fired from the head spot, but today's action was totally unexpected. I was stunned uh, because I just felt that uh, it was a completely unfair uh, decision uh, under the absolute bizarre year that we had. One other basketball note for you tonight, New York Knicks center uh, Patrick Ewing has been named the NBA's Rookie of the Year. Ewing averaged 20 points and 9 rebounds a game but missed 32 games due to injuries. Ewing beat out Seattle's Xavier McDaniels. In tennis, it's really rare when Martina Navratilova loses, but even more rare when she's dominated in a match. But that's exactly what happened when she met up with a 16-year-old in a German singles final. The shocking upset was engineered by West German teenager Steffi Graf, who had the fans in Berlin screaming with every winner, and there were plenty of those as Graf unleashed a deadly arsenal of passing shots, and all the number one seed could do is watch. Martina abandoned the net game in the second set, and it turned into strength against strength. Martina's backhand against Steffi's forehand, but on this day, Steffi had more power, more precision, and more consistency. Martina makes the unforced error on match point, and Steffi Graf pulls off the stunning upset victory, winning 6-2, 6-3. In tennis, that's really one of the major upsets of the year. Now, in professional football, the New York Jets have traded five-year pro bowler Marvin Powell to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for an eighth-round draft choice in next year's draft. Powell, who went to USC, staged a 48-day holdout last season in a contract dispute with the Jets. Powell now must make the team with the Jets in order to receive that draft pick. That's a look at sports for tonight, John. What do you Christian? think Steffi Graf's going to fare in the Wimbledon tournament? I think she's going to do terrific because 
it does wonders for her confidence to be the top be woman's top player in the world. So she'll go in there with all the confidence in the world. Now other people will respect her, maybe fear her a little more, and she may get even she, to the quarterfinals, to the finals. Maybe. I don't, hmm. well, at 16, I don't, did she play when she was 15? Yes. I'd she's been playing, she's been playing a long time, yes. Oh, yeah. I met Wilbur. So the experience might you know, be too much for her. I don't think so. I, when you beat the number one player in the world anywhere, if you go to a major tournament, it's going to make you feel pretty good. And she'll, uh, she'll have a great deal of confidence. Court? Yes. Why not? She hey. deserves it. Sure. <laughs> Let's talk about it after 11. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, you Jim. Jim. <laughs> we'll move right along. <laughs> we'll be back after this. The black Cadillac, please. Right away, sir. Excuse me. I believe that's my Buick. Today, it's not easy to distinguish yourself from the crowd. The Lincoln Town Car, please. Yes, sir. But Lincoln builds luxury cars that stand apart. So whether you choose the Town Car, the Continental, or the Mark 7, you'll know there's nothing like a Lincoln. See your Southern California Lincoln Mercury dealer. Presenting direct from London, winner of the Best Musical Award, Me and My Girl. Starring the winner of the Sir Lawrence Olivier Award, Robert Lindsay. I'm leaning on a lamppost. I think Robert Lindsay is the sexiest thing out. It's a fantastic show and everybody should come and see it.